So my name is Jancho. I come from Bulgaria, from a software engineering company. In the company, I deal with uh, uh, things around uh, sales and uh, also taking care of strategic land and also things around innovation technologies. My background is software engineer. So I, st I started as a software engineer for 10 years, 15 years. I did almost everything in the um, uh, in the in terms of the roles in the life cycle of software engineering and at some point I turned to business and started combining business and IT. So what I want to tell you about is a story about how a company that uh, is actually not supposed generally to be able to spend time of full-time people from the team of the company to work um, dedicated on a software, an open source uh, project, how we did it. So. It might be interesting for you, and uh, I'd be really happy if this encourages you to think about it and maybe try it in your own companies. So I'll start with my motivation, why I discuss this, I'll tell you our story, and uh, I will give you my vision about how you can try this uh, in your company also. So why I discuss this, my motivation, we are in a conference where open source is a core topic, uh, so no need to explain why open source is good, uh, but on the other hand, uh, dedicated, um, dedicated software engineering initiatives within companies are actually rare. Uh, and they're especially rare in occasions of uh, when we're talking about service, services companies, so companies that don't have their own product uh, but are providing software engineering services. There are a bunch of types of companies that actually are, um, for them, it's a no-brainer to invest in uh, software, open source uh, software development. So one type is uh, companies that are really focused on open source uh, software, like the ones that we see here. Another, another usual suspect are the big ones that anyway um, are uh, open sourcing uh, parts of the things that uh, they create. Um, and uh, yeah, those are the, the big players. Also, we have companies that uh, are heavily using a certain open source software or platform, and actually it's of their interest to be able to steer where this goes in terms of the decision making on how it will be enhanced and uh, driven and roadmap and, and everything. So in those cases, it's normal that they engage on the development so that they're able to actually uh, do the steering. Uh, there are the non-profit uh, organizations that are focused on open source projects like uh, Eclipse Foundation, the Linux Fun Foundation, and also there are many uh, academic, uh, fun academic projects uh, that are being open sourced uh, that are funded by universities and other institutes. So those are the usual suspects for companies that it makes sense to invest in having full-time people working on open source only. What if your company doesn't fit? What if it's, uh, you, you, you don't fit into any of uh, those profiles? How can it happen? So how can it happen so that you, in your company, um, it makes sense and it actually, uh, you actually have a, a team working on open source? For a company that is there for making money and being successful, why do they do something? that costs, that will cost money, uh, most of the time because there is a business reason behind it. So the question is how do you find in such non-trivial cases the business reason for actually um, this to be meaningful for the company. So how can it happen? First of all, you need to come up with a business case. So imagine about it, come up with it, and make something that in the short, mid, and long term would make business sense. Second, you need to gather feedback and supporters. So hear uh, opinion of people around you within the company and fine tune your idea. Then you need to pitch it to the decision makers or the budget owners. If it's a smaller company, it could be the CEO. If it's a company that is um, uh, bigger, it might be your direct manager. Pitch it to them, convince them that it makes sense, and then start small, start experimenting with this, uh, with a trial phase, make sure that in the beginning it's successful, and then get the go for the long-term initiative. Uh, when the initial phase is over, or the trial phase is over, and you have uh, positive results, then you need to maintain it in a sustainable way. So 
I would say this is common sense. For anything that you want your company to do as an initiative, more or less you need to do something like this. So it doesn't really relate to, so, to open source software engineering. So I will tell you our story, actually how we did it, so that you can uh, visualize how this plan can be implemented uh, with a specific scenario. So a little bit about uh, Musala Soft. So Musala Soft is a company that has been around for more than 20 years now, founded in Sofia in the year 2000. Currently, we are more than 700 experts uh, with uh, uh, delivery locations in Bulgaria, Macedonia, and Egypt. We do a lot of stuff in emerging technologies, so we are early adopters of uh, AI, big data, IoT, specifically smart home, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, robotics, uh, and the likes. And uh, in terms of development, the core um, capacity that we have in terms of delivery is Java and .NET. Also, we do a lot of front-end, mobile, uh, data and analytics, etc. Our target markets in terms, of, in terms of clients are European Union and North America. And the three verticals where we mostly work in terms of clients are telecom, banking and financial services, and automotives. And we work for big clients like the logos that you see on the right side. And we work for them long term. So the average duration of a relation with our current top 10 clients, where we have IBM, VMware, SAP, uh, Commerzbank, Volkswagen, uh, and, uh, and the likes, uh, currently is more than nine years. So you can imagine we have clients that we've been serving for 15 years, for 10 years, for six years. And it's not like 15 years ago we did one project, then 10 years ago second, now no, we started 15 years ago, never stopped till now. So this is the profile of our company. What we are not, we are not building and selling our own products. So we are a services company. We are not providing services around a specific open source platform. So we are uh, vendor agnostic. We use both commercial and uh, open source platforms, but we are not specializing in anything. So it's not like we have an inclination about this or that uh, open source tool. Um, there is no open source tool that we are particularly dependent on. Like it's a core tool that we use in our everyday business. So it's really important that uh, that tool for us so that it makes sense to maybe contribute also there. No, nothing like this. We are a services company. In terms of tooling, we work with uh, a myriad of uh, to, uh, tools uh, because uh, usually you need to adapt to, to your client's preferences. And yeah, we are not a really big company. Like currently we're 700 plus people. When uh, this uh, initiative happened, uh, we were uh, more than 400 people. So, um, then what was the context within which uh, we, um, uh, we um, actually initiated the idea, which was uh, initiated by my colleague that you see, Martin Momov, uh, who is director of delivery in the company. The things that combined this context that allowed this to happen were our focus and our strong experience and business with smart home and IoT. So we do a lot of stuff with IoT, we do a lot of stuff uh, with uh, smart home projects. Back then, Deutsche Telekom Smart Home was uh, uh, the biggest project that we had. So we had something like a team of, I don't know, 60 plus people uh, for more than six years. And we were a core part of the, the initiative. And we also, as a company, invest a lot in people. So we, um, we are very well positioned with universities. We get uh, early. Um, uh, let's say, f um, guys that are out of the university or uh, with uh, small experience, uh, small amount of, e of experience, and we build them with uh, internal initiatives, uh, putting them on projects, etc. So this thing on the left side is the context that somehow combined in the, in the head of my colleague Martin. And then uh, I'll, I'm just copying here the slide that I showed you what we are. And then we'll highlight the things that actually got together with an open source initiative that involved this. So there was an open source initiative, an open source project that actually related to a significant part of the strategic targets and the strategic, the strategic um, let's say, goals of the company. So it was a project that related to IoT, to smart home. It was mostly Java. It was mostly uh, focused uh, and uh, supported uh, by people in the European Union. Uh, and also it was, uh, uh, it was used and it related to two of the uh, core, core industries that we were serving, telecom and automotive. And in addition, 
it was a big and active project. So an active open source project with uh, significant uh, delivery, uh, significant um, contributions and usage. It was in a tech area that fitted uh, really well with us. So Java and OSGI. So back then, quite dependent on the smart home things that we've been doing were on OSGI. And to the thing that we were looking to find alternative ways, effective ways to train new people in the company that are either not experienced, so not experienced developers, or developers that have experience but don't have experience in this area of smart home and IoT specifically, uh, which was uh, a target, uh, target uh, area for, for growth of our business. And then we came up with, uh, Martin came up with this, um, uh, with this uh, idea. Why don't we actually gather a team of people put them on a, uh, create a team, and have this team start contributing full time on an open source project that actually combines those things that are strategically interesting to us. And one goal to be to build those people. If they are early in their career, they will have core development skills built. Second, if they are experienced, and at the moment they don't have a project, we can put them for a few months on this one and actually prepare them for getting into one of our IoT projects or in our smart home uh, project. So um, those things started emerging in, in his head. We had a discussion and we went to our CEO uh, to convince him to invest in this initiative. As I said, it's aligned with uh, uh, quite a few of the strategic areas of the, of the company. Uh, we positioned it as an enabler for professional develop development, as I explained. And also, uh, this was a way to add one more project of this type to our portfolio. Uh, because, you know, when, when you're growing in one, one area, um, the references or the, the, the things that you've been doing, the more they are, the better. Um, also, we told our CEO, we don't want something big now, and we are not sure if it will work out. So we just want to start small tried with one or two people in the beginning, mostly less experienced colleagues, so it will not cost much of the company, and just see how it goes. So we want to give this a try for an initial phase of three to six months. We'll monitor results regularly, and if it works, then we'll talk again. So we didn't want much, we just wanted to see if and how this will go. We also, um, uh, we also um, mentioned that uh, this will help a lot with our employer branding because, um, you know, with uh, companies trying to, to hire people um, and uh, in general developers uh, being happy for working on open source projects, putting this additional detail about our company that our company is actually actively supporting with full-time team uh, um, an open source project would have definitely benefited uh, our recruitment efforts. And also, without any specific expectations, we said it could be also an enabler for getting new business because we will have exposure to other companies that are doing, uh, that are working on this open source project uh, as supporters. Um, th there's no way that we don't get uh, networks, uh, networking with them, and most probably, if there is a fit, we could uh, have also new business. So, with describing all those. Uh, all those uh, benefits, we actually convinced our CEO to, to give this a try. So to invest with uh, starting, uh, starting with, with this initiative. So the project itself is OpenHub. So OpenHub is an open source smart home system. Um, and uh, back then when we started, it was also closely related to Eclipse Smart Home. So Eclipse, is found, Eclipse Foundation's um, smart home platform. So it's about home automation, open source software, one of the most uh, popular around the world, let's say top three, uh, vendor and technology agnostic, outdated data, but back then it had uh, 16, um, more than 16,000 registered users, and uh, um, the, the, the MyOpenHub service was used by more than 2,000, and the foundation that was behind it, so the organization that was uh, driving its, uh, uh, its progress was founded in 2016. It had individual 
like tens back then it was it had tens tens of individual members. Currently, I believe there are more than 100 or even mm, even even more than uh, more than that. Uh, currently, there are 13 companies. One of them is Musala Soft that are backing the foundation. Uh, one university and also one research center. Uh, it is focused on advancing uh, open source in general, smart home, and specifically open hub. So it's a foundation, the organization that stands behind this um, uh, project. As I said, quite active and significant in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, yeah backers of the initiative. The Open Hub platform itself, the smart home platform that I'm talking about, uh, is uh, really widely used for research by academics. They're doing research projects on top of it. Uh, people are doing uh, bachelor's, master's, and even PhD theses using the platform. Uh, and uh, of course, dependent, not dependent, but because of this, uh, there are also articles and conference papers. So it is well used, well recognized as a tool for actually experimenting and uh, doing uh, research for open, uh, for um, uh, smart home. Uh, different uh, topics of research, home automation, smart city, and etc. Uh, Eclipse Smart Home, I will not get into details, uh, but yeah, as you know, one of the uh, big uh, um, open source. Uh, um, so Eclipse Smart Home uh, was an initiative within uh, the Eclipse Foundation, uh, and it was uh, an open source framework, again, related, as I said, to Open Hub uh, and, uh, and IoT. Uh, and Eclipse Foundation, which I made a mistake and start talking about, is, uh, as you know, one of the uh, big few um, worldwide uh, known um, foundations that are backing open source software. So we had the confirmation by our CEO, okay, give this a try. So what did we do after that? So it started in April 2016, and in the beginning we started with one full-time developer only and one senior developer that was mentoring him part-time. Then in a couple of months, we got to three developers full-time, uh, mostly, let's say, upper juniors, so people with some development experience already, something like a year and a half, two years, uh, with no experience with IoT. Plus, again, one senior developer. And then for your information, I will continue with details of the story, but uh, we were uh, maintaining for almost three years uh, something between three and five developers, full-time developers at any moment, and uh, one, um, one senior guy that was uh, leading. Um, Scrum team with all the uh, proper issue tracking and, uh, and planning and everything. Here you can see um, at, uh, in, in one year after we started, uh, those are the people, this, this colleague uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is down, is uh, the, the colleague uh, Mitko Ivanov, who was leading on our side and supporting the initiative. And you see people that were by this moment either part of the initiative, part of the open source team, or they were alumni. Were there for, let's say, four, five, six months, and uh, after that, they, uh, they left. So I believe that this thing that we did is a win-win-win situation. So win for the community and the project, the team, and the company. And I'll give you my reasoning about that. What's the impact that we made on the project? So just within a year and something, we created a static, static code analysis tool for the project. So there are a lot of integrations that are being implemented for this smart home platform. And all those integrations uh, need to follow strict rules of how they are developed. So because otherwise they might break the, break the software that uh, they will be running on. Uh, so this is why it's a tedious work for people to go and check a lot of stuff for every integration that is being contributed by somebody. On the other hand, the rules are uh, clear and there was a way to actually create a specific static code analysis tool that can just uh, uh, eliminate this tedious work from the contributors uh, and the supporters. Uh, we engage with forgotten tasks, tasks that uh, I, I don't know how, how many of you are working on uh, open source projects, but with almost any open source project, there are things that have been waiting for a long time to, to happen. There's an agreement that need, they need to be done, but not, nobody ever actually does them. So we engage with those tasks. Um, also, there were tasks that nobody really felt like doing because they are not that interesting, etc. 
we have a team for, for working on that. We were not like selective, we engaged uh, on that also. So this, this is how actually we gained also trust and uh, how should I say, uh, appreciation by the rest of the people because we were doing stuff that helped them a lot. Uh, we did uh, service and device integrations. Uh, we did stuff that, again, in open source projects are almost always lacking. Unit tests, uh, good unit test coverage and documentation. Um, so this uh, uh, sample of uh, the, the report from the code analysis tools, to, uh, those are things around some of the integrations that we did. This is some of part of the documentation back then that uh, our people started uh, doing, etc. So one year later, this is the statistic, uh, one year after the start, this is the statistic of actually what we did and what we achieved for, um, for the project. Uh, and here, again, back then, you can see some, some comments from, uh, from long-term uh, people in the, in the project to our people. Thanks, simple and elegant, uh, clever solution for uncomfortable, looks like some fantastic piece of work, etc., etc. So we got recognition and definitely we did, uh, I, I mean, the team actually contributed significantly to the project. So to me, the first bullet is ticked. It was definitely a win for the community and the project. So let's look at the team. So back then, as I said, this is uh, uh, how the, the team looked like on the first side, on the first row and the second row, people that actually went to the team, stayed for something like three to six months and then moved on with their next uh, project. Um, we asked some of, uh, we asked all of, of the people uh, uh, three questions uh, before preparing this presentation, which originated uh, a few years ago. Uh, and first question was, how do you feel about being part of the open source team? Amazing experience, very interesting, hard and inspiring. The best place to be for an embarrassed junior like me, motivated each day, professionals from all over the world, giving feedback and making, having them grow. I learned a lot from them. Just we'll stay on this one for, for a second. Um, it's totally different especially if you're only in your career, if you're working in a team and you're gathering feedback from people around you. And it's a different story if your code goes public and you actually get, um, how should I say, uh, detailed reviews by people that are with, from all different uh, backgrounds and uh, with usually long, long-term uh, experience. So we believe that this really, really, um, elevated the effectiveness of our junior colleagues growing within this initiative. Second question was, uh, the, what are the, the most useful skills you gained uh, in the open source team? New concepts and technologies, uh, learn to write clean and high quality code because of course everybody was uh, um, uh, commenting on the code reviews and everything. Uh, uh, moved away from the fear of working on big, big projects. Um, very important to me, I've learned to cut the complex tasks into solvable pieces, so being able to dec decompose in a meaningful way uh, bigger tasks and actually uh, this way succeed in doing them. And me also as an uh, old school developer, the, the last one I really also like, I've learned to test my code back, back in my times we were testing our codes and uh, the deliverables of our work anyway, all the developers. And the third one, what was the most exciting part of you working on the projects? Um, they played with real devices because it's a smart home, thank you. Uh, the fact that it's an open source project, the ability to engage with uh, international community, um, meeting a lot of new people and learning a lot. So again, from this, I definitely see I, I definitely would say that uh, it was a win for the team also. Another thing to mention is that this was the initiative where the people that, that, get, that got the best results in terms of building people, both in terms of how much time they needed to grow their skills so that they become, um, uh, they become independent contributors. So let's say, because on our side, when we say mid-level developer, this means that he can independently work consistently 
and when they meet, uh, when they face really hard problems, they then, then they need help. Uh, so that's the difference, the main difference to me about uh, between junior and mid-level people. So the people that came out of this initiative and went on their, let's say, first commercial project after that, they had the biggest, um, the highest percentage of acceptance, really great feedback from their team leads and also the client, etc. So definitely, this compared to combination of, uh, let's say, online training plus being part of uh, uh, teams that, like you have, for example, six people team and then you put one junior guy around them to contribute and, um, um, and grow this way on a client project, of course, they will be neglected when there are hard times of the project. Of course, they will not get that much attention when people are busy um, uh, catching the next deadline and everything. So this was the most effective way to train people with the best results, great motivation. The word spread around the company. We used it, of course, to, to popularize uh, this also publicly. Uh, to, to spread the news publicly and uh, also other people that were around them were also, as I said, really happy that actually Musala is doing something like this. So let's see about the company. So what happened from the context of uh, the company? Uh, the results so far, as I said, this is outdated. Um, so back then, within a year and a half, in terms of professional development of people, it was full success. I just explained it, so we'll not get into, into that. But still, very important, the thing about uh, uh, process communication skills. So getting into such uh, uh, active uh, environments when you, uh, uh, you connect with uh, people with, uh, from international backgrounds all over the world, we work, all, let's say, almost exclusively internationally. So all our commercial projects are uh, for international clients. But still, if you are part, like an added part of a project for a, um, for a client, you don't get this direct communication with the client, you don't get this uh, being that active in that. Here, they got full exposure and needed to take full accountability of what they are doing in front of people that were actually, um, how should they say, veterans in the, in the industry and things like this. So uh, growing their uh, soft skills like uh, communication, knowing the process, etc., was also really, really effective. Uh, in terms of employer brand and reputation, we got extended uh, external exposure via conferences uh, and other events. This session I'm doing, I myself, I'm doing it for the fifth or sixth time. So I did it in Belfast, in Germany, in Bulgaria. Um, I don't, don't remember where, where else. So. You, you get exposure about uh, what you're doing and more or less a positive vibe uh, and appreciation. Um, as I said, very much appreciated internally. So people that are not part of this were willing to get into this and were also uh, happy that uh, we are doing it. And uh, all the people that worked on that were highly motivated because again, working on a client project but being an addition to this, it doesn't feel really well always. Working on internal projects, for example, on some of our, our internal systems that we're building, sometimes it's, uh, it's hard uh, for many reasons to, again, get the attention that you need. So in terms of motivation, it was perfect. In terms of business, also. So we had two direct opportunities from new clients based on the networking that we're doing with the other companies, with the fact that we were doing uh, this initiative with Smart Home, and we contracted one of them. Apart from that, we, get, we got uh, four indirect project opportunities through references uh, from new clients, and uh, two of them were contracted. So we had three, uh, within one year and a half, actually, we got three uh, engagements that were commercial uh, that originated either directly or indirectly from this initiative. Um, it was greatly appreciated by existing clients and also potential clients. So when we were telling our clients that we did something like this, they were impressed. Uh, potential clients, when it's just part of the whole, let's say, uh, introduction or presentation, especially if it's in the topic of IoT, uh, it's again something that makes a really good uh, impression. So it helped from this perspective. Also, uh, it definitely uh, helped us broaden the expertise and capacity that we had in this area. You saw how many people were within a year and a half. We kept it like for three years. 
and uh, yeah, the extended exposure now from the perspective of uh, business development and sales. So we managed to do it really a win-win-win. So it was a win for the community and project. I, I showed you within one year what were the results. The team, uh, both the specific people that went through this uh, uh, initiative and also the, the rest of the colleagues in the company and the company from the pure business perspective. So I would say yes, it's a win-win-win. We managed to do it. So how you can try this in your company? Um, so strategically, you need to put yourself in the shoes of your management. So consider what are the key priorities for them, what are the pain points, what are the important things, and try to relate something within such an initiative to those key points. So you, in order to convince them, it, will be, it should be something like a business case, just like uh, I said. Come up with an open source in initiative that makes sense in the long term for the company. So choose a project, choose an initiative that actually will fit in the long term. Like we chose uh, smart home and IoT. For, at the moment for 11 years already, we are very active in this area. And it's, uh, it, it will continue to be like this. So choose something that will fit the strategic uh, long term uh, goals uh, and focus of your company. Um, yeah, as many as, uh, as many as possible of the, of the goals. So it can be uh, like type of system, like for example, smart home, then technologies, is it with the technologies that you are moving forward? In terms of geography, because sometimes open source projects are kind of focused in certain geographies, are those geographies your target geographies, no matter if it's for people or if it's for business? So think about it holistically, as many parts of the strategy of the company, if you can relate to them with uh, this initiative, it would be a good fit. And then also, very important, try to align the, this initiative with uh, the non-technical people from management that are um, uh, like talent development, sales, operations, and PR. Just go to them, ask them what they think. So go to them and don't, uh, actually don't ask them what uh, they think. Tell them that you have this idea and ask for their advice. So people, if you ask them what, uh, what they think, some guys will tell you that's uh, not a good idea or whatever. But if you not just make them feel, but you really want their advice, they engage. And they will consider, OK, from, from the PR perspective, yes, it's a good thing because I will make, be able to do at least, let's say, two, two press releases. Or we can do at least uh, four articles in, for our blog uh, and uh, LinkedIn posts or whatever this year. Um, and you will start hearing things that you can incorporate in your reasoning to the CEO. Start small, as I said, don't ask for, okay, now we'll make the big thing, five people focused on that. No, start small. And don't ask for an initiative, ask for a trial. So ask for something that is very limited. Instead of getting a commitment for something long term, ask for a small commitment. You do your job, you walk the extra mile to make sure that within those two, three months it is uh, uh, it is successful and then move on. Based on what you put as uh, expected goals that you decide, uh, that you expect and kind of commit to work on, keep this and on a weekly and monthly basis track and measure your progress. And talk once a month to the person that uh, actually allowed to, for this to happen or committed the budget and provide them candid feedback. Like don't exaggerate but just directly say what uh, the situation is. And treat it from your perspective as a long-term initiative for day one, even though you have a commitment for let's say two months or three months or something like this. If you consider that it's something long-term internally as somebody that is uh, doing it, then, then your attention to it and your efforts are different. So I, I'm almost out, out of time, so I'll, I'll just uh, quickly go through this. Um, so this is strategically, and then in terms of plan, do an analysis based on the strategic points that you did and uh, shape, uh, shape a plan. Choose uh, a few, a few uh, projects that could be good candidates. Um, as I said, based on the, the feedback, uh, actually adapt the plan that you're having. Um, like wh what I'm saying here is that not come up with something and directly go and try to pitch it to, to management. Come up with something, talk to people, uh, get additional ideas. Some people will tell you um, like uh, valuable feedback that uh, you can incorporate or fix things. Um, and then describe 
uh, this whole thing, uh, show the relation to the strategic goals. So I'm doing this and I believe this will help with that, this will help with that. Come up with the idea about uh, the direct and indirect benefits that you expect uh, and to also do a good estimation of the expected costs. Don't try to uh, depreciate uh, because costs uh, are important. Instead of uh, trying to depreciate them, just show your commitment about uh, achieving uh, valuable uh, benefits, uh, be it direct or indirect. Create initial plan, pitch the idea, don't get discouraged if it doesn't get uh, supported from the first time, uh, polish it, try again, and then, um, yeah, always, as I said, uh, as I said, strategic and have, uh, have, idea, have um, idea about the, the big picture, so I'm, I'm finishing. Uh, then when you have a confirmation, have a project champion, somebody that will drive the initiative, so somebody that will burn inside to do this. Uh, then uh, do the, the initial period, two, three months, make sure that you're su uh, it's successful, so you tick at least half of the things that you expected to, to be there. The third uh, bullet here is uh, uh, all in red, uh, because as I said, work, um, work hard on the, the side project tasks, like tracking, the non-technical benefits, the things with uh, HR and PR and etc., so that you reap the benefits from this perspective also. Communicate internally and externally newsworthy stories about this um, and regularly track actually the project spend, so actually how much it costs and report it to the decision makers. So what's next? Try it for your own. If you happen to be in a similar situation, uh, it might not be a services company, it might be another thing, but it's just, I hope I managed to convince you that a company that, if you look at it from the side, it doesn't make any sense to do something like this, can actually do it and keep it for years to have a full-time, dedicated, open source team contributing to an open source project. Thank you for your attention.